Today, we're diving deep into the recent developments surrounding AMC's short interest, which has notably doubled this year. We'll explore how short sellers are affecting price movements, the implications of recent financial news, and what all of this means for investors. So, grab your snacks, settle in, and let's get started. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell. So you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. Let's begin by discussing AMC short interest, which has doubled this year. According to Frank Ness, this increase raises important questions. Despite ongoing claims that short sellers have abandoned the MC or are not trapped, the data suggests otherwise. The increase in short interest indicates that short sellers are not only still in the game but are ramping up their positions. When we look at metrics like institutional ownership and on balance volume, it becomes evident that many investors are still buying into a MC. This contrast between growing short interest and rising retail support implies that while short sellers are attempting to push the price down, there's a strong base of investors willing to buy shares. Now, let's examine why these short sellers are concerned and the tactics they might use to control the price. Recent events surrounding Archigo's capital have created ripples in the financial landscape. Investigations are underway regarding whether major banks like Credit Suisse and UBS conspired to stabilize prices amidst significant losses amounting to about $10 billion. These firms attempted to mitigate their risk by liquidating positions when faced with staggering losses. Credit Suisse even required a bailout from UBS. This situation showcases the volatility of financial mechanisms involved in trading stocks like AMC and GameStop revealing the challenges these institutions face in controlling prices effectively. It's crucial to highlight the role of lenders in this ecosystem. Institutions like Bank of America act as primary lenders to firms like Citadel, giving them substantial influence. When lenders perceive that their positions are at risk, they often resort to strategies aimed at minimizing exposure, which can include pressuring stock prices downward. Bank of America, with its large asset base tied to these trades, is a key player. Their motivation is clear. They want to protect their interests, particularly regarding the enormous short positions held by their clients. Let's move on to another concerning development. The SEC recently charged several financial advisors for inadequate record keeping, resulting in a relatively minor fine of $1.3 million. While this may seem insignificant, it underscores a broader issue within the financial industry. Failures to maintain proper records and the prevalence of failures to deliver, or FTDS, are directly related to market manipulation. Moreover, a decline in the clearing fund meant to guarantee these FTDS adds another layer of risk. As margins shrink and FTDS remain unchanged, both short sellers and their backing institutions find themselves in a precarious position. Recent developments suggest a shift in market sentiment. For instance, Steve Cohen's recent announcement to step down from Point72 has raised eyebrows, especially after disclosing substantial positions in GameStop. This situation indicates that even significant players are reassessing their strategies in light of recent market changes. Additionally, reports of a major bank announcing impressive net income figures raise questions about how unrealized losses are being managed. The disparity between reported income and these losses signals a potential market correction on the horizon. The Federal Reserve's recent decision to lower interest rates by 50 basis points could also lead to significant market adjustments. This move is intended to stimulate economic activity, but might create volatility, especially for highly leveraged positions. Greater market transparency is essential as we navigate these complexities. Recent controversies, including actions taken against individuals like Andrew Left, illustrate the need for accountability. The ongoing issues with counterfeit shares and inadequate enforcement of trade settlements must be addressed for market integrity to improve. It's encouraging to see some accountability in the industry, but for a truly fair market, we need comprehensive reforms that tackle the root causes of manipulation. Despite these challenges, there are positive signs for MC. Recent buying activity has been observed, significantly pushing the price up. This trend indicates robust interest from investors, which is vital for MC's continued success. Increased investment interest can create a favorable environment for MC, 
potentially trapping short sellers even further. If AMC can build on this momentum, it may lead to a significant shift in market dynamics. In summary, the situation surrounding AMC is intricate and multifaceted, with short interest doubling, significant institutional maneuvers, and shifting market sentiments, the stakes are high. As we continue to monitor these developments, it's crucial to stay informed and engaged. The journey for AMC is far from over, and there's much more to explore in the coming days and weeks. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.